Welcome to Pathways to Success at PGCC. And now here's your host, Professor G. What's the deal, folks? Welcome to Pathways to Success at Prince George's Community College. I am Professor G. Mark Gray. Thanks for joining us today. Today's pathway is the formula. What is the formula? Have you seen those sports teams that you love so much and they're basing all their decisions on figures? That's part of the formula. And joining us today are people who understand the formula that makes for a great pathway to success here at PGCC, the best kept secret in Prince George's County. Glad to have with us today Lynn Hyten, who is a professor of chemistry. She worked at the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Commerce, and has also taught at Anne Arundel Community College and the University of Maryland School of Nursing. And Lynn, we're glad to have you today and to talk about this evolving pathway. How are you? I'm good, thank you. And also joining us is a proud PGC alum, Lynn, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Malachi Wright. He currently is a dentistry student at the University of Maryland. He received his biochemistry degree from Towson University, and he too joins us as we look to um, uh, expand on the horizons. But I think even before we get into this, talk about paying it forward. I mean, you're a guy who were fortunate enough to have your um, time here at PGC uh, taken care of. But then you paid it forward and made sure somebody else. Could you tell us I walked down that pathway to paying it forward first? Yeah, definitely. 100 percent. You know, coming to Prince George's Community College was definitely the greatest decision I made in my life personally. Uh, and I believe that paying it forward is extremely important solely because of the fact that you never know what somebody may be going through. I know my brother and I came here. Uh, it was a struggle to, like, try to work a job and, like, put, put gas in the cars and stuff like that. So any extra scholarship money that we got from Taos University and more specifically PG, uh, we were able to pay it forward to send students who were specifically from community colleges some type of stipend or something of that nature and we still do it to this day which is fantastic but yeah you definitely got to look out for your community for sure and uh you have a twin brother right i do yes yes my twin brother attends a law school right up the street from the doodle school uh so we're kind of repping this stuff out together uh and yeah we we do we do a lot of stuff together and we're identical too so i yeah. know yeah. I, we've <laughs> seen you on the posters all over the Lar <laughs> uh, largo campus so uh, uh uh great stuff uh, Lynn, talk about when you see a story like Malachi's and what that does for, how does that feed you? Well, I like it when, you know, it's an opportunity to go to school. And so, like, giving as many people that opportunity as possible is why we're at, here at the community college, right? The operative word being community. You want people to be able to come here, irregardless of their circumstance. We don't have, like, entrance exams. We take everybody and we meet you where you are. So, you know, if, and if you can get funded for that, that's awesome. It just helps everything because most people have kids, parents, they're responsible for other things. They're just not going to school. What do you think makes this pathway pop from a student's perspective? What's the it factor? What makes you go, wow? You know, a lot of people are concerned, especially with my generation, with money, right? And being able to go to school for no cause, and in many cases, you're getting paid to go to school, is definitely a big win. And I will honestly say, going to a profession where it costs a lot of money, you know, anything in medicine is going to be expensive. So starting off at Prince George Community College, where I had the opportunity to do two years, those foundational two years are extremely important, because not only are you taking the classes that you will be taking at any four-year institution, and they're, they're all transfer over, by the way. Um, and you'll, ha you'll have the opportunity to engage with a different community that everyone doesn't necessarily look like you in regard to age and different things of that nature. But it set me up for success for sure. So, so you speak to what we've talked about in previous episodes about people wanting to secure the bag. Mm -hmm. When you stepped in, was that uh, a primary motivating factor for you as you were moving uh, through the program? Yeah, you know, I had come from a very large family. So there's, I have seven siblings and two parents. My dad's a high school teacher. My mom was a stay-at-home mom during that time. And it's a really big, important thing to really navigate diff different decisions on finances in regards to education. Uh, so I started out, I had a couple football scholarships, none of them were full rides. Uh, but I chose Prince George Community College. Um, I see more so they chose me because I came here for something totally different and I ended up getting a full scholarship. But yeah, if you want to chase the bag and you're worried about getting finances for schooling, definitely come here because you're not only going to get a quality education, but you're also going to learn those principles where you're able to succeed in the realms of which, you know, a lot of us are not able to succeed in. Lynn, what attracted you to this pathway? 
Well, I've always liked science, right? And um, my, when I was, uh, I, I had an equestrian degree. I was teaching riding lessons, and I broke my leg. So I'm couch surfing at my dad's house, at my parents' house, and my dad says to me, I will pay for you to go to community college, but you have to pick something that you can make money at. And he, would, that, he was like, that would be engineering, math, uh, chemistry, physics, or, or uh, yeah, that was about Technology. Yeah, something yeah. out of technology. So he was like, and I'll pay for you to go. So I started at a community college because none of the women in my family really went to college Right, this is like the early '80s. The men went, but we, the women didn't. He's like, and he got a young woman. He hired a young woman at IBM who was an engineer. And he looks at me and he goes, "You could do that." And so he just was like, "I will pay for it. You just got to pick one of these fields. You can stay at my, stay with me at my house because I was an adult then, right? I was like maybe 18 or 19. I had been out on my own, and uh, he did. And I then I transferred, and I just I loved it because I was not. I was good at high school, but I didn't like it. I didn't want to be there. It was a pain in my butt. I, I hated <laughs> every second of it. I used to skip constantly, right? Because that was when they didn't really check. <laughs> right. and, uh, so I'm like, as soon as I hit the community college, I'm like, oh my God, you could just, um, you go to the class, you go home, no one's all over you. You could just do what you need to do to get your work done. It's lovely. I loved every second of it. And so it was. I was really happy to transfer to uh, the four-year college, JMU, because Virginia's got a similar thing as Maryland or you can mm -hmm. transfer to an in-state school it was wonderful you know and then I got picked up by the government right away after I graduated but who can say that right mm -hmm. so your father encouraged you oh yeah and then when did it click for you I mean I always like he bought me like chemistry sets okay. and stuff and like I always just really liked stuff like that it's just you know we're from Vermont we <laughs> you don't go to college you go like you get married and like hope you get like, a nice life <laughs> you know it's not right. like that was going to be my skiing. path yeah. right and he's just it just occurred to him cuz i used to not do my homework in high school if it didn't get done on the bus it was not done <laughs> and i still was like had a b average you know and he's like you could totally do this and um, i'd never heard of calculus before he's like don't worry i'll tutor you and he did. You know, like if I had problems with certain things, he would just be like, well, this is how you do that. He would read my textbook and he would help me. And you need that. Right. And a and, lot of our students don't have that. And, and so how much of what he taught you uh, do you use to fuel your methodology? All of it. All right? of it. Like I have extensive office hours. People don't take me up on them. Every once in a while, I get somebody that sits in my office the entirety of the office hours. And I'm like, you don't need me to talk to you that whole time. You just sit there. And if you have a problem... You say it to me, and I'm like, oh, well, we can do this. Or I'll be like, you try try this and see if it works for you. But you need that support. You can't be sitting at the kitchen table crying by yourself. You come and sit in my office, and I'll help you. We have all sorts of the math. People have excellent tutoring. There's a tutoring center here that's dedicated. We have all sorts of resources for to get people where they need to be. Because we accept everyone. There is no entrance exam. I, I think I said that. But it's it's critical. There's... We do that, and universe, Baltimore City's community college, that's it. You know, everybody else has an entrance exam. You come here, and we will get you to where you need to be. Interesting that you bring up Baltimore, because I got that alumni card from that school as mm -hmm. well. Um, Malachi, when did it click for you, the pathway? When did you know this was the direction you wanted to take your first academic journey mm -hmm. and then your profession? And the funny thing is, when I was in high school, I definitely resonate with what Dr. Lynn is talking about. I skipped class so much. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Chemistry, definitely, I was barely ever there. And that was solely because I was fixated on the notion that I was going to the NFL. Like, I was going to be playing some form of sports. Uh, when that didn't work out, obviously, I was here at community college. And it really didn't click for me until after my first semester. My first semester, I didn't do so well here at the school. And that was because I really wasn't utilizing all the resources that the school had to offer, honestly. Uh, and I was really thinking about switching my major because I was like, yeah, this science stuff, I can't do this. Like, I never took a science class before. Um, and like in regards to chemistry and stuff, I was trying to avoid that course as much as possible. <laughs> and I, I always loved dentistry, though. Um, I, I will be the first doctor in my family and no one is in my family is really into the STEM stuff except for my dad. My dad's a math teacher in high school. There uh, it is. <laughs> but I really don't like math. Uh, and the funny thing is, is one thing that he taught me in addition to my mom as well is just resilience, right? If you want to do something, don't let anything, any course, anyone get in the way of you wanting to do that. And I knew that I wanted to become a doctor of dental medicine. So I tried to figure out exactly what I had to do to, to get there. 
And obviously, for many of you guys who don't know, we had to take all these chemistry courses, bio courses, the orgos, and all that good old stuff. And I was like, okay, so I have to get through this. It didn't click in my mind for me until I went to one of my professors who taught here. I don't know if he still teaches here or not, but I went to one of his office hours and I was just talking to him about what I wanted to do. And I told him, I said, you know, I don't really know if this is for me. Like, I don't, I don't think I can do this. And he told me, he said, you know, take one, take another class and just see how it is. And then when you take this class, just dedicate yourself fully to trying to do well in this class. And from that point on, I haven't gotten anything lower in any of the science classes, or, or A, lower than an A, any of the science classes I've taken. Um, and that was from Chemistry 1. And I will honestly say that moment didn't really click until I realized that all I needed to do was be resilient, surround myself with the people who were like-minded and trying to go to the same places, and just not give up on myself, you know, give myself a chance, a fighting chance to, like, really, really strive to do what I really wanted to do. Uh, and in that moment, I, I would be remiss if I if I say my brother didn't help me in that during that time as well, uh, because we were both here together and having that camaraderie with a person, you know, you're staying up at nine, studying 10 o'clock, studying 11, whatever it is, having somebody there, a companion with you, it could be a friend, brother, mother, whatever, whoever it is there to, to kind of motivate you and push you. And my girlfriend as well, you know, that those factors all really played into who I am today, honestly. And I would say without that, that community that I have here at Prince George Community College, um, I would never imagine that I would be getting admissions to schools like Columbia for dental medicine or schools like UPenn. I could have had the option to go in, in any school in the country if I really wanted to. Um, and that foundation was definitely laid with the professors here at the school. So, Can you, you all both share, and I'll start with you, Lynn. Um, why, when I say that PGCC is the best kept secret in education, why is that? Because we give you value. Like, I'm not just going to pass you. I'm going to get you to where you need to be so that when you transfer to College Park or wherever you're going to go, that you're not going to fail, right? That's why we have rigor here. Like, and mm -hmm. I'm not saying everybody passes their chemistry class the first time because they don't. But we'll, if you don't, it's like my Malachi said, if you're persistent and that's what you want, that's what you're going to get. And we'll make it happen. We'll help you with that. You just can't give up. What about you, Malachi? I will honestly say that, you know, in coming into this university, um, and if you don't mind me asking, can you repeat the question? Because I want to make sure I answer it correctly. I just want you to tell me why PGCC is the best kept secret in education. Got you. 100%. It is the best kept secret in education because I will say this. Many false narratives are being elucidated about PGCC. And more specifically, when I was here, um, before I transferred to Towson, I heard the narrative of, oh, well, it was a community college, so it probably won't be as rigorous as, you know, you, when you transfer to Towson or University of Maryland College Park. And I'll tell you this much. The professors that I've had here were some of the best professors I've ever had. And that's in addition to the ones that I have right now in my, in my doctoral program. And I'll say that because they really pushed you to the point and they had a level of academic success that was different than all the other individuals who I've encountered. They were there for you. If you emailed them, they got back to you quickly. The office hours were extended um, and, and all these different things that really helped keep you on track and motivated you in the community that was built was very drastic so yeah it is definitely the best kept secret in pg county and i will honestly say in the state of maryland that's great stuff and and we got about a minute left so i did want to get uh one final thought about stem itself and how important it is for people to wake up and understand uh, the way the world is going and 10%. how stem playing. we're increasing by 10 percent stem stem fields well, it's specifically the, the um, computer science and like related fields like that. But you can get um, as compared to about 2% for other non-STEM related fields. Our average salary is maybe 97%. And that, I got that from the Bureau of Labor Statistics from 2022 compared to other non-STEM fields that are about 44,000. So if you are persistent and you will do the time with us, you're going to make some money. You can secure a bag, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, that, know. you quickly got about oh, 30 yeah, seconds. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, I would definitely say that you, you could definitely secure the bag if you go to or start out of community college. Um, and STEM is the future, honestly. If you do anything in the realm of STEM, you're going to be having the opportunity to network, engage with all other people from different walks of life, different countries, whatever it is. Um, and you're always going to have that opportunity to further excel. So, yeah, it's the future for sure. Len Hyten, Malachi. Kyle Wright, thank you so much for sharing 
your successful pathways here at PGCC. And uh, I'm sure we'll be seeing more of you around campus on uh, the posters. And then I'm sure you'll continue to, uh, you know, light those bright minds into great professionals. Over there in Chesapeake. Indeed. There it is. Anyway, thank you so much for your time, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, that's going to do it for this edition of Pathways to Success at Prince George's Community College. Remember, we always got the light on for you here on the Largo campus. And come check out the best kept secret in Prince George's County. I'm Professor G. Y'all have a good one. You hear? Thank you for watching Pathways to Success at PGCC. For more information about Pathways at the College, visit our website at www.pgcc.edu.